Hello, my name's Fraser Chadburn. I'm an independent consultant and trainer in SysML and UML. I'm also an experienced software engineer. I'm going to show you how to build an executable SysML model from scratch in 10 minutes using the designer edition of Rhapsody set up with a Sigwin GCC compiler. In this example, we're going to build a planet destroyer. We're not talking about plastic bags, this is purely hypothetical. We'll use a science fiction example. I'm going to use automation here. While I could build the same model without automation, I'm not going to be able to do it in 10 minutes. Imagine a construction site. In the early railway engineering days, you might have a thousand people with spades. In today's world, we use JCB diggers and giant machines that lay tarmac. This is my second generation SysML helper. I'm currently working on a third generation. I'll add it to my Rhapsody profile folder here. I can then create a new project with it. The method I'm going to use is a derivative of the Harmony SE method created by Hans-Peter Hoffman at IBM Intellogic, previously of iLogix. It starts with use case modeling. It does not use the Harmony SE toolkit because the first stage of the method involves creating requirements using textual activity diagrams to describe use cases. My helper does the work of creating the model structure. It also override, overrides DoubleClick to create the activity diagram for a use case based on a template where the properties are set up to allow free-flowing text and the diagram toolbar is simplified. The purpose of using activity diagrams is twofold. They make the diagram accessible to stakeholders. This approach is designed to make the diagram consumable in a conversation with a real end user. They also make it easier and more powerful for a non-trained use case modeler to model the steps. Remember, a use case is not a step the system does, but rather a story about how the system is used to achieve something of value for an actor. While I like textual use cases, one of the things you can do much better with an activity diagram is to show multiple scenarios on one canvas. This means we can start with the sunny day scenarios, but then it can easily add the alternate flows that may occur. It's often the rainy day scenarios that will influence the design, hence it's valuable to consider these up front. We can use the easily understood control flow semantics for UML activity diagrams to do this. We can, of course, use decision nodes and parallel flows. What I've also seen users like is the ability to express the system reacting to events. For example, using an interruptible region to show how the actions may to be interrupted by something that occurs. An interesting anecdote people say about activity diagrams is that it can be understood with very little training. This makes them very good for that initial stakeholder review. Collaboration with a graphical description of what you believe the system to be and check in that with the end users and stakeholders before you go on to the more detailed definition work. The next stage of the method is to generate the requirements. So let's do this now. A helper provided by this SysML profile speeds this up. It copies the text and establishes a relationship as a start point. Of course, the user still has a creative task of making sure that the requirement's written well. The whole diagram needs to be covered.
Getting coverage here is critical, so I added a helper to check it. I am, after all, a software engineer. Something we're also doing here is somewhat subtle in this example, which is to start the process of integrating multiple use cases into a single definition. If we have the same steps in other use cases, it's important to reuse the same requirements across the diagrams, rather than create new ones. For example, checking the planet is in range may be used for perfectly non-hostile features. Of course, with a modeling tool, unlike a diagramming tool, we can drag the same requirements onto multiple diagrams and link to different modeling elements with them. I can also query the model to view the traceability and check coverage and completeness. These are not the requirements for the entire system, however they could be the requirements of a set of use cases, what we might call a feature or function the system performs. We would of course review the requirements at this stage and ensure that we have a consistent set of well-written requirements. Unlike reality however, time is short so we'll skip this, something which of course would never happen in reality. Let's move on to the next stage. The next stage is Peter Hoffman's harmony approach with functional analysis. To simulate the system, I need to build an executable context. This is a heavy lifting task. Fortunately, the help I wrote, because I'm a software engineer, will build the execution context for us, thus speeding things up dramatically. In my method here, as the active diagram is more textual, this requires a little more work as we need to identify the function names. Fortunately, this work can be semi-automated and very systematic. Once created, I can now go about the systematic approach. Little by little, we can convert this activity diagram into things the system receives as events, things the system does, or outgoing events the system sends to actors. For example, the evil death lord saying destroy the planet is something sent by an actor called the death lord. The semantics we're going to use for this are to put these behaviours into Harel state machines and execute them. In Harel based state machines, the actions are done on the transitions, and states are conditions of existence where the state of the system is disabled. What the helper is doing here is not only creating the event, but to also carrying forward the traceability to the requirements that we created earlier. This is absolutely critical because it will allow us to measure completeness. Ensuring that everything traces will move the traceability from the activity diagram to the interaction model. Since the state machine is fully executable, it will be able to integrate multiple scenarios into a single behavioral expression. We can then execute the state machine to create both the original set of scenarios or to define new ones. The resulting sequence of diagrams are to all intents and purposes test cases. There are various ways in Rapsd in which you can stimulate a state machine that is running. In this instance, we're using the Webify toolkit, which is a panel that's automatically created by ticking some options in the Rapsd configuration. We could also use a panel diagram, or we can directly inject events onto animated versions of the sequence of state machines. Let's see if we can extend the state machine to cope with these additional steps. In particular, there's two different scenarios here. In the sunny day scenario, if the planet's in range, then the system will light up a green flashing lamp. The, de the death lord can then press the green button and blow the planet to smithereens. If the planet's not in range, then it needs to inform the death lord that it can't do the operation. This is essentially a alternate flow of the use case, which is to destroy the planet. Of course, we may have many, many scenarios when we build multiple use cases that the system can do. The ability of the state machine to integrate these scenarios into a single definition means that we're reducing the chance of flowing inconsistent and unconsidered scenarios downstream. It also means that we can look at some of the scenarios we haven't yet captured we'll find states that we can get into that we haven't considered how to get out of. And this enables us to left shift the process to make sure that our requirements are fully considered before we push them downstream.
The semantics we're going to use for this are to put these behaviors into Harel state machines and execute them. This conops model is declaring a set of system level behaviors from respect to the actors. Something in the system needs to flash a green lamp. Some part of the system will need to respond to evil Death Lord's vocal instructions, and something will need to check the planet is in range. By adding states, we can constrain and group behaviours originating from the use case steps and enable them to be sequenced. Let's finish the scenario. When the evil Death Lord presses the button, the system will blow the planet to smithereens. We'll put the final transition into our state machine. We can then build, run and execute the scenario. After doing this, since we've added precision and correctness, we could then have the option to supersede the textual expression with its more precise and unambiguous counterpart. This concludes the demonstration of how it's possible to build an executable model of a system from scratch in under 10 minutes. There are a number of secrets to doing this. The first is heavy use of automation to do the heavy lifting of setting up the model structures so they can support the simulation. The second is use of a stage process that separates the task into phases. The first phase focuses on understanding what the stakeholders want from the system using activity diagrams to model use cases. Importantly, it involves no simulation at all. Rather, it focuses on eliciting stakeholder needs and conventional use case modelling. My view is only once you've captured these needs should you attempt to build an executable model of them. It's an 80-20 rule. You'll get 80% of what you want from simple activity model. What the executable model gives you is the artefacts that take you to the next stage. They can get you into orbit. To get executable modelling, you need to do a model to model transformation from the activity diagram into the interaction model. This process is highly systematic. You're essentially building a set of sequence diagrams that describe the same behavior, where all the sequences are coordinated by an executable state machine. At this point, you have precise and unambiguous definition of the concepts of operation of the system. You also have something more, which is a set of behaviors that can be allocated into a white box architecture. Of course, there's lots of things I've not shown. However, if you need any further help or interested in what's been shown, curious about what's in the third generation of the helper, then please don't hesitate to get in touch. As an independent consultant and trainer, I have the skills and knowledge to make sure that you don't waste time.